Hello. Uh, last day we discussed um, or concluded the discussion on the uh, public intervention, uh, the programs and schemes done by the government of India and the state government uh, after the uh, till the, the current uh, years. Today we will discuss the, uh, the urban reforms. Uh, we already talked about the uh, various programs or the schemes where we mentioned that uh, various reforms were the part of the programs one by one slowly slowly uh, it, 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 it took the pivotal position to create an enabling um, uh, environment or facilitating environment for the housing market. So, today we will see that what are those reforms which created a fantastic environment in India uh, where uh, every stakeholders including private, public and semi-public uh, organization they are uh, trying to contribute in the housing sector or the basic services for the housing sector. So, first among this, um, um, uh, this reforms, uh, before I go to the main discussion, I just tell you, just recall our discussion on the barriers of the housing um, provision, which we discussed in the last two uh, lectures. We identified that barriers were basically finance and land, most of the barriers are finance, land and technological barriers. So, we will see today one by one, what were the reforms and how it tried to solve the, the current problem and the issues. So, first reform which government of India uh, came up in after 2000 is the, uh, is the 100 percent foreign direct investment in housing construction that was not permitted before this time uh, and government uh, they, uh, they considered that uh, unless we get the uh, foreign funds in housing and uh, the overall flow money flow and overall construction and supply will not be adequate to achieve the housing for all which we discussed last day. So, 100 percent foreign, di foreign direct investment in housing project it was permitted and it is a very very important reforms in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the, the current enabling market of the, uh, uh, of the housing and as a result of this uh, many projects. Uh, about uh, 400 to 500 projects with the uh, foreign direct, uh, direct investment. Uh, it came after the year 2000 to uh, this time 2015 in various states across the country. So, this is one of the uh, major reform in the housing finance and basically it helped the institutional finance that is the, uh, the project finance by creating uh, enabling environment by creating support to the, uh, the developers by giving a support to the developer in terms of the finance of the project. The next was the Urban Land Ceiling Act. In uh, you must be knowing that in 70s and 80s there was uh, land reform in rural areas and urban areas. The main objective of the land reform that time was to uh, was to uh, distribute the land into various hands. The objective of the land reform was to uh, to stop the jamindari system and to distribute the land in, land in various um, hands so that the poor people who are basically using the land for long they get their part they are bit of their land. Similarly, with the urban sector, the government of India they came up with the urban uh, land ceiling, urban land ceiling act in 90s. The main objective of this land ceiling act was that no person in his own name can have the land uh, more than 500 square meter in an urban area. So, this land ceiling basically, basically uh, makes a condition where not a single individual person will have a uh, bigger chunk of land and its ceiling was most of the in most of the cases 500 square meter. So, the as a result of this the initially it the, the objective of the land ceiling act was uh, very great, but finally we found that due to this land ceiling act uh, we were not getting the large chunk of uh, land in urban areas to invest in housing to create a bigger housing project. Because in 500 square meter uh, plot uh, we cannot uh, make a bigger housing project, bigger uh, community as such. We can maybe uh, do a, a stand alone building uh, um, uh, which can offer maximum to 10 to 15 households. So, that was the problem we were not having um, the 
bigger chunk of land uh, even after the foreign direct investment in the housing project even the finance is there investment is there but land is not there so after that when jane in urm last day i talked with jane in urm so in jane in urm this was one of the major reform that uh, for the state government that they have to repeal or withdraw the urban land ceiling act so that the major lands can be uh, amalgamated combined to make a bigger parcel of land so that investor and the bigger projects can be done on that bigger uh, land that was the major um, um, uh, reform now the fact is the except one or two states most of the state government they have repealed or withdrawn the urban land ceiling act and as a result uh, last day i talked with talked about the affordable housing in partnership so in partnership or through the joint venture mode the government authority like housing board development authority or the uh, state government authority in partnership with the private developer uh, they are having the bigger land bigger land with the foreign direct, direct investment they are uh, able to right now to create bigger housing projects so that is a major reform in in last few uh, years then third major uh, reform was in land acquisition act sometimes even through the land selling act is repealed you amalgamate the land but in urban areas the getting bigger land is even much more um, difficult so the another uh, i mean major uh, source of the land was through the land acquisition act uh, through this act any government authority any public body they can acquire land for the public purpose if the project is very big if the housing project is very big for the lower income group or the middle income group they can acquire the land but the problem is the the due to land acquisition acts it its nature uh, during last couple of years we have seen that uh, the the due to its nature the people people did not accept the land acquisition act as a very social um, uh, instrument rather we have seen that due to this land acquisition act there are various incidents of social unrest and various incidents of non acceptance by the people um, as a tool to public intervention so for this reason government basically was compelled to revise to revise uh, the land acquisition act and they came up with a revised land acquisition act in 2013 and 14 they came up with revised la act and with some amendments basically the fundamental difference between the earlier land acquisition act which was framed in 1894 during british period and this land acquisition act is that in the earlier act there was no provision of taking the consent of the uh, the people who are basically owning the land right now but in this approach in 2013 and so 2014 the major difference uh, between the earlier act and the new act is that any government authority before acquiring the land they have to take the consent from the people so that the uh, based on the consent of the people only the land can be uh, taken there are few more other elements but we will not discuss right now we will have a dedicated lecture on the the legal part so that time we will discuss but definitely after this land acquisition act it is uh, now the uh, land acquiring uh, is a comparatively uh, easier mode Uh, easier mode from the public perspective uh, it is comparatively chal comparatively challenging mode from the private perspective but definitely it's a major reform in the uh, urban reform in the uh, in the housing market which is enabling the market to uh, deliver the more number of housing the next reform which was there is basically the the controlling the real estate investment and controlling the developer uh, before this act Uh, actually in india except few state governments there were no uh, legal provision no legislative provision to control or to manage the real estate development or the housing development or the developer so government of india they in 2013 again they came up with this developers act whose main objective will be to maintain the transparency and
transparency uh, in the transaction uh, for a common man for a housing for getting a housing and accountability for the, uh, the private developer. So, under this developers act every developer has to register their uh, project under the uh, statutory body uh, uh, in each state government and not only that they have to keep some amount of money as a security deposit. Uh, so, that uh, eventually if they do not perform they do not deliver the housing as per the prescribed as per the contracted specification um, uh, 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 transparent specification and they are uh, ultimately they will be forced to return that money to the end, end user or the buyer that is the main objective of the developers act. So, developers act created a major reform in the urban areas in controlling the market in controlling the developers. Apart from the developer act another um, uh, reform came which is called as real estate real estate investment trust in short REIT fund. So, objective of the REIT fund is to, to, uh, to mobilize uh, the finance from the market, uh, because the, uh, the middle income group and higher income group they often invest money. Uh, in various uh, financial instruments in banks or in various uh, financial institution. Uh, so, the objective was whether uh, e uh, those investment at least some share of those in uh, investment can be mobilized, can be accumulated, can be used to in the real estate sector to further increase the, the, the cash flow or the money flow in a transparent way in the market. That was the objective of the real estate invest investment trust or REIT fund. Uh, right now, uh, so far it is under, I mean it is not uh, functional, uh, but the developers act, it has been converted as an act and right now it is, but definitely many state government, they have to uh, adopt the or uh, they have to take the actions under the act. That is the major um, reform in terms of the developers, uh, control of the developers and the housing market. The REX reform uh, uh, came uh, uh, in during the 2000 and the two after 2010 was the property tax reform. Uh, so far, we had a uh, system of the property tax, which was having a uniform uh, collection of the tax for the people irrespective of their income category. So, uh, So, in this reform government tried to have some variable, <coughs> variable uh, uh, segment or variable parameters of the uh, uh, property tax. So, that a poor person, a common person, a common man who are uh, buying a house uh, with a minimum amount with their hard earned money, they can, uh, they can register their house with a minimum amount of property tax even up to 1 percent, only 1 percent. Whereas, uh, the uh, higher income group or middle income group they can continue with the property tax with 7 to 8 percent or at the as the rate prevailing at the state government. So, that kind of the variable property tax based on the income category or the housing typology category. For example, the government of India during the uh, affordable housing in partnership paradigm they propose that the the slab house the slab for the uh, the the income category and the property tax could be like lower income group middle income group or as per the um, floor area like 30 square meter or 60 square meter so major uh, reform or major achievement under the property tax and the stamp duty um, um, paradigm was that to have the uh, variable kind of stamp duty and property tax and another reform which came through in the property tax is that, um, that deviating from the individual based property tax regime to a area based property tax regime in the municipal area. So, property tax and stamp duty both uh, make the reform in the housing sector towards the towards the more um, uh, active market towards a more people friendly market in the housing sector. After that we see another reform, <coughs> the 
that we have already discussed mentioned last day that is interest subsidy subsidy in housing finance. For the common people um, the interest subsidy up to 5 to 6 percent will be given by the government whereas the remaining part 2 to 3 percent or 4 percent can be given can be uh, afforded by the common people for the housing finance. So, this will basically enable a common man or a group of people to buy the housing, uh, buy the house from the market. So, it will increase their affordability and this is basically a uh, demand side intervention, it is create more demand from the market, from the people. So, all these reforms, all these reforms and uh, some incentives in various state governments like uh, say creating a market of uh, variable floor area ratio and giving uh, additional floor area to the developer or to some uh, um, uh, residential districts or residential areas to the uh, uh, developers and joint venture which actually facilitated uh, the private developers and creating an enabling market. Those kind of practices were also taken by the government of India and um, the state government and also some municipal corporations and development authority by giving additional uh, in incentive in terms of FAR or the um, um, uh, the, the flexibility in the building rules, so that they can supply more housing. That was the another reform uh, along with the financial and land reform which came. So, so far we have discussed the land reform, land financial reform and some of the legal reform. In the next session uh, we will discuss the housing policies in details, the starting from the first housing policy, second housing policy and latest national habitat and housing policy and rental housing policy. Thank you.